we are creating more and more data every day, yet our tools to manage all these pieces of information have stayed the same. I'm talking about all the overflowing drop boxes, huge picture galleries where it takes you ages to find that one cute bikini pic, and these really awkward moments where you're like, where did I save that important text form again? This video is all about designing a file structure around your life instead of just adapting the one that your computer is suggesting to you. A couple of years ago, I was working for a quite successful tech startup at the same time as I was studying at university. At that time, I was pushing myself quite close to the edge of a burnout. One major symptom was that I completely lost track of all my builds, files and documents. So I'm an engineer and during my recovery I did what every engineer is doing after a failed test. I was destined to find the root cause on why I lost track of everything. One of the issues I found was the way we structure our files on, the, on our digital devices does not match the way we structure our lives in general. Let's do a quick thought experiment. I'm coming back from a vacation and I took a look at pictures, I rented a car and I'm tracking all my expenses in some kind of spreadsheet. Until this point, I was basically using the structure that my PC was suggesting to. Your life consists of pictures, documents, movies and music. That was basically my top level file structure. Now we can already see why this might become a problem. We have the single event in my life and we need to fit it into multiple subfolders in our data structure. And at that point you start to lose track of your life. Once you try to look up that ev event, you have to recall all the different file types to fully reconstruct that piece of your past. So let's define the problem we're actually trying to solve. How might we structure our data based on our lives instead of data types like pictures or documents? To come up with the first prototype, I sat down one afternoon during a longer train ride and took a deeper look into the data I actually had. I tried to forget anything I thought I knew about structuring files and really focused on which files were most important to me. At the end of this train ride, I created the seven layer structure. So let's start with the lowest, most important layer. In this folder, I save everything that is essential to my life. Without this, my life is in danger. In my case, these are folders like identity, where I store all my official documents, like my passport or my social security number, health, where I keep all my blood tests or my data about past injuries, home, where I keep my contracts for my past and current apartments, and finance, where I keep everything from my bank accounting, over my banking documentation to my assets and liabilities. Of course, there are some more subfolders, but it doesn't make sense to share them right now because uh, every life is different and we're going to create your personal file structure to the end of the video. So let's continue with layer two. The second layer is the security layer. The purpose of everything in there is to ensure the existence of layer one. So and for me in the Western world, this boils down to my different insurances. One very good example is my health insurance. So in my past data structure, I mixed health data and health insurance because they are dealing with some, some kind of the same system and have mostly the same data type like documents and are closely related. But at the end, you're using them for different reasons. You care for your health to live as long as possible. So it's an essential topic and the insurance is just a tool to make that goal possible. So it's not essential, it's a security topic. The third layer is the social layer. Everything about my social life gets stored here. For me, that's my family, my friends, events I go to or social media. This folder is already way bigger than the previous two because I store a lot of pictures in there. But in comparison to my past, 
pictures folder, it's quite small. That's why it's so easy to have a proper backup structure because of this system. You can do specific backups based on these layers to save space or to speed up your backup system. I'm going to release a completely separate video on this topic and I'm going to link it up here so you can watch it once it's uh, released. The fourth layer is the individual layer. This folder contains everything you do to feel good about yourself or to feel valued by others. For me, this boils down to sports and my diet, because if I don't keep an eye on these two, I basically feel like a couch potato and I really cannot harness my true potential. So now that we got the serious things out of the way, let's start with the fun stuff. So the fifth layer is about learning. It's the cognitive layer. So everything about school, university, internships is going to end up there. For example, I did my boating license last year and my whole documentation, my, my registration and my bills regarding the license are all safe there. One special folder on this layer is the jobs folder. This one is a great example and how folders might change layer over time. But I'm going to release a separate video on this one because you can make better decision and design your life smarter based on this structure. I'm going to link this one as well in the info card once it's released. The sixth layer is the aesthetic layer. I'm storing everything that's aesthetic to me in there. That's something like traveling, music, art, literature, and games. And last but not least, the seventh layer, self-actualization. So this is actually this YouTube channel or any projects you do on the side or even businesses you might create, start out in this layer. At the end of my train ride, I came up with this structure and something felt extremely familiar. Some of you already might have noticed that it resembles the hierarchy of needs created by professor of psychology Abraham Maslow quite closely. To be specific, it's quite similar to his last revision of the hierarchy of needs, which got published right after he died 50 years ago. Inspired by his work, I called the system I came up with need-based management. Let's create your own need-based management file structure. At the end, the whole message of this video is that you cannot just copy someone else's finished file structure, but you have to design your own because your life is different than everybody else. But I'm going to give you the framework to finally create your own file structure, so let's go. Step one, grab a piece of paper and a pen. Step two, draw a big triangle and separate it in eight horizontal segments. Or cheat like me because I'm horrible at drawing with this camera in my face. Step three, ask yourself the following questions. For layer one, which things are essential to my survival? If it's hard to you, for you to come up with something, revisit your old data structure to get inspired or to watch the part two of this video. For layer two, what do I do to secure the things on layer one? You can imagine layer two as a shield above layer one. For layer three, what does being social mean to me? For layer four, and that's a quite tricky one, what am I doing to be myself? And what am I doing to be an accepted part of society? For the lower four layers, it's really important to keep them as lean as possible. Maslow designed them as deficit needs. So if something is missing there, your life will get worse. For an example, if you live on the countryside and you need a car to go to work or to go grocery shopping, I would create a folder on layer one, which is called mobility, with a folder car inside of this. Because if you lose your car, your life will get a lot worse. I, for example, don't need a car. I live in a big city. I use public transport to nearly go everywhere. So I have a mobility folder on level three because this is the first level where I need to move somewhere else because I want to see my family and my friends. In there, I store all my plane tickets, my train trip tickets, my car rental or car sharing contracts and so on. Back to our pyramid. For layer five, where do I learn? 
For layer six, what inspires me? What do I enjoy? What is art to me? And finally for layer seven, what do I do in my free times, like hobbies or projects? What are my dreams and what kind of crazy ideas do I have? Moslov defined this top part of the pyramid as growth needs. So if you spend time on them, your life will get better. For an example, if you spend time on an interesting hobby, you might be able to use these experiences in other parts of your life or maybe turn your passion into a business. But keep one thing in mind. If you don't spend time on these layers, your life will probably just continue as before. So please take your time to answer these questions and write the results in the corresponding layer inside your pyramid. One effective way to design your structure is to write down your old mid-level folders on small posters. By mid-level folders I mean the folders between your top level folders like pictures and movies and your bottom layer folders like pictures of my 21st birthday sent to me by Tom. Then take every mid-level posted and put it on the layer of your pyramid where it belongs. Once you've rearranged all your mid-level folders, you're ready to move on to the next step. So the final step is to test the file structure we just built. Depending on your motivation and how much time you actually have, I prepared a three-step action plan for you. Step one. That's basically the easiest one. You test your file structure by actually using it for the next three weeks. You start by transferring your structure to your computer. Create a main folder called need-based management or short MBM and generate your, main st your structure inside that main folder. Create an inbox folder right next to the need-based management folder where you dump all the data that's coming in during the week and you don't have the time to sort in and commit to one day per week where you sort the files from the inbox folder to the need-based management folder. Action plan two is actually for those who already have such an inbox folder. Think about your Dropbox or your standard download folder, for example. Use that one as a first test and move those files over right away. You might need to create more subfolders because you missed one or two needs, but be careful with moving subfolders between layers because it might seem convenient to merge a folder in a different la layer, but be really, really honest with yourself whether that change in priority is justified. And the last step is taking care of all your old files. So move everything over to the new structure. This one is for the ones who are really motivated or for the ones who have to stay at home right now. You don't have an excuse anyway. I would highly suggest to gather all your files in one big inbox folder as well. So get your Dropbox, your OneNote, your iCloud files and your external hard drives, your USB sticks and your phones and collect everything in one place. This makes sure that you get rid of all duplicates as well and gives you a clean start to sort everything into the new file structure. This file structure is supposed to model your life. So everything about you should fit into it and there shouldn't be any different repositories or something else where files of you are like just wandering, wandering around. I'm super curious which action plan you actually use. So let me know in the comments below by writing hashtag NBM1 for the first action plan and hashtag NBM2 for the intermediate action plan and hashtag NBM3 for the extreme quarantine action plan. So we finally made it. I never would have thought that my first video would be this long. And especially as I'm just starting out, I would be super curious to hear your feedback on that framework. At the end, I'm sharing all this information just so that many people can, can, can work with this and we can build a system that is truly focused on us humans and not on the structure of machines. As already said, I have so much more content coming up, so feel free to subscribe and click that little bell icon so every time I upload a new video, you get a notification. I had so much fun making this video 
and I really, really hope to see you on the next one. So stay human, see you next time. Enough with the fear. Enough with the fear. Enough with the... Enough with... Enough. 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 Enough.